China is really the center of product innovation, where technology changes so fast. China is really the best way to roll a product and have a billion people testing for you now. The blockchain space was given an unexpected shot in the arm this weekend as China's President Xi Jinping called for the country to accelerate its adoption of blockchain technologies as a core for innovation. Now, the remarks saw double-digit gains in the crypto markets after a period of bearish pressure and reignited the China meme last seen during the 2017 boom. And it follows quickly on Mark Zuckerberg's recent warning to lawmakers in response to criticism over Libra. And just as I'm recording this, my timeline is blowing up with news that China is in fact set to launch its digital currency, the DCEP. So maybe Zuck was right. Prominent Bitcoin commentator Anthony Pompliano was also quick to add his voice, calling it a great point. But does he see this being the catalyst for the US to launch its own digital currency? It's possible, for sure. I, I don't think it's one event, though, that drives a lot of these decisions or conversations. I think it's a confluence of events. So it's, you know, hey, this Bitcoin thing is interesting. It's not going away, right? Hey, uh, there's actually multiple countries around the world talking about the US dollar reserve currency system is expensive or um, difficult to use or not advantageous for them. They want to get off of it. Hey, China's going to digitize their currency. Hey, we actually have uh, not a lot of transparency into what goes on in um, you know, the US dollars. Hey, there's a lot of cash that's used for uh, money laundering, right? And that might be uh, curved if, uh, if we digitize the currency. And you kind of put that confluence of events together and you get a conversation around, hey, should we digitize the currency? Whatever your opinion on digital currencies, China is suddenly very hot. But Harmony has always seen the area as a huge opportunity and embarked on a Far East tour earlier this month. So what did they learn? The market in China is um, moving very fast and in some ways is ahead of the Silicon Valley market. All the projects now who are talking about mainnet, testnet, the projects in China have already experienced um, all the problems that we may experience in the near future. Uh, things like adoption, use cases, so instead of taking a year to learn those things. We can just look at projects uh, in China who have done the same thing, but much faster. Funny thing is, everyone wants to talk to us about Libra, and most of them actually don't understand Libra. They just want to ask us what Libra is, can we be part of it, can, we, can they participate? They have no way to participate now. Many of the, where the funds or projects actually want to be using the US entity or US partners to be participating in Libra. Most people ask about where technology is. They still look up to whether America, Silicon Valley, if not the rest of the world, to tell them what the vision is, what people care about. If you look at China, right, a lot of the blockchain projects that, have, that started two or three years ago, they're not as relevant anymore because they haven't found a good use case. One year ago, everyone talked about EOS, right? This year, not it anymore. We're at the very early part of the adoption curve. There is no concrete path that's been laid out that we just need to follow it. We have to make the path from scratch because this industry doesn't exist. Another learning that was really amazing is just about the markets and what are some of the pain points that are still in the market. So one of the things is cross-border payments, even things as simple as small, medium-sized businesses moving money into different currencies because they need to do business with uh, the world outside of their country. That's something that we thought was um, there are a lot of solution providers, but actually that's a totally unsolved problem. There's tremendous amount of untapped market. There's actually new market opportunity. It won't be a one switch that will uh, uh, turn on and things are going to change. I think it's about building trust that this technology can work. And, and that's, that's our real starting point and real kind of initial goal or milestone. Most people are already so primed to crypto now you just need to tell them what is actually being usable now, that they are ready to talk more. They are actually very, very deep. Of course, it's one thing to say you're going to build in China. It's another thing to actually do it. And the competition will be fierce. Attacking the Chinese market is tough because you have shadier protocols like that are attacking that market. Neo, which is still very centralized in that market uh, to begin with, focused on gambling apps. But now we're starting to see marquee projects like Polkadot, like Near, move into that space and try and gain market share. And it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out because the culture is very different. Um, in China, 
people building on these platforms are interested in profit from day one. Uh, they're not as altruistic as I would say the stakeholders are in the US. We actually are afraid to go to China and have a business there because it's so competitive there. Coming from Silicon Valley, you must not be afraid. Even though the regulation, the challenge is there, we must not be afraid. And if all else fails, there is one very tasty trick up Harmony's sleeve. People actually told us they love us being the barbecue coin. It's really the funniest thing because you're willing to give people something to know that it's the community. Barbecue to them, of course, is American culture. Barbecue to them, obviously, is a way of gathering. But barbecue also to them is that they care about us running two and a half years and more of building a community instead of just taking it as an opportunity that we take it seriously every week of building this community and culture and of course the mission come out of it.